Hello, I'm Hema, an operation engineer from AWS Managed Service at the AWS office in Dublin. Today, I'm going to show you how to create or manage AWS Landing Zone application account with a VPC. I'll also show you how to create an AWS backup plan. Let's get started. Log into the AWS Management Console of the Management Account and then navigate to the AWS Managed Services Console. In the navigation pane, select RFCs, select Create RFC, select Choose by Category. For category, choose Deployment. For subcategory, choose Manage Landing Zone. For item, choose Management Account. And for action, choose Create Application Account with VPC. And then choose Create RFC. In the General Configuration section, enter a subject and a description. You can also enter your email address to receive email notifications about the status of the RFC creation. Choose a request schedule. To create an application account now, select ASAP. To create the application account on a specific day and time, select Scheduled RFC. I'm choosing ASAP. In the Execution Configuration section, enter your application account name and email address. The email address becomes the username credential for the root user of the account. Choose the account's AMS support level. Enter the VPC name and the VPC CIDR as per your requirement. For number of availability zones, enter the number of availability zones that you want the application VPC to support. You can enter a maximum value of three. Enter the ciders for the private subnet for each availability zone. If you have additional requirements for creating the application account, then enter the requirements in the additional configuration section. If you want to specify an application organizational unit name, then enter the OU for this account or select the default application managed value. I'll go with the default value. To receive a tagged resource base alerts, enter an email address for direct alerts email. Because it's optional, I'll leave it blank. You can also enter the URL for a SAML metadata document that is used to turn on federated access to the application account. This is typically a pre-signed URL for an Amazon S3 object. i leave it blank. For root type, choose the connection type of the AWS Transit Gateway application root table. The default type is rootable. If you want the application VPC to access connections from other VPCs, then keep the default type rootable. If you don't want any traffic going to the application, then select isolated or choose none if you don't want to choose a specific connection type. If you choose rootable, then enter the Transit Gateway application root table name of the application account VPC. The default value is default app root domain. Again, I'll go with the default value. If you want a public subnet in your application account, then enter the public subnet availability zone ciders. Enter a name for a backup plan one. I'm using the default backup plan name. Enter the tag keys of the resources that you want to backup. The field is case sensitive. So make sure that you enter the tag exactly as it is written. For example, if the tag is backup, then enter backup with a capitalized B. Don't enter backup with a lowercase b. Next, enter the resource tag values. This field is also case sensitive. I want to backup a resource that has the resource tag value true with a capital T. For backup rule one schedule expression, enter the cron expression for when you want the backup to start. I'll keep the default schedule. For backup rule one, delete after days, 
Enter the number of days that you want the daily backups deleted after they are created. If the value is set to zero, then a backup never expires. I'll keep it as it is. For backup rule one, move to cold storage after days. Enter the number of days that you want daily backups move to cold storage after they are created. If the value is set to zero, then the backup never moves to cold storage. I'll keep it as it is. To create more than one backup plan, enter backup plan details again. If you want the instances that are deployed in the application account to be patched regularly, then create the fields for AMS Patch Orchestrator. For Patch Orchestrator, first stack key, enter the first stack key to use for creating your patch group tag values. If you already defined patch groups with the patch group tag, then specify null. I'll add the first stack key as app ID. Continue to enter any other tag keys that you want to specify. I'm going to enter a second tag key as environment. For patch orchestrator default maintenance window cutoff, enter the number of hours between when the default maintenance ends and a new patching command begins. I'm entering one hour because I want one hour to pass after the default maintenance window ends and before any new patch commands begin. For patch orchestrator default maintenance window duration, enter the duration of the maintenance window in hours. I'm entering one for one hour maintenance window. Enter the cron expression to schedule the patch orchestrator default maintenance window. I want my patch to happen every day at 6 p.m. For the patch orchestrator default maintenance window time zone, enter the time zone when you want instances to be patched. For patch orchestrator default patch backup retention in days, enter the number of days that you want the backup taken before patching is available. Backups are deleted after the number of days that you specify. I'm keeping it as it is. Finally, for patch orchestrator notification emails, enter one or more email addresses to receive notifications about the default patching status. It is the best practice to use a group distribution list instead of individual emails. After the RFC execution is completed, the RFC output gives you the application account number and the VPC ID that the RFC created. To check the VPC and other resources such as the backup plan, patch maintenance window and the subnet, log into the new application account and then navigate to the VPC console and select the new VPC. As you can see, the VPC name is test VPC and the VPC cider is here, which is what I entered when creating the RFC. Next, check the subnets. Four subnets were created as part of the RFC. In each availability zone, there are two public subnets and two private subnets. Then check the backup plan. Navigate to the AWS Backup Console. Then select Backup Plans. As you can see, the default backup plan is successfully created with Backup Rule 1. And the frequency is the cron expression that I defined in the RFC. To confirm that the information you specified for default patch maintenance window is accurate, enter maintenance window. The cron expression is what I specified for the RFC and the time zone is in UTC. And now you know how to create or manage AWS landing zone application account with a VPC and a backup plan. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS.